Hi, hello, my name is Salem and welcome to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I have been gone for a very long time. And unlike my other videos where I just kind of brush over it and, you know, and I disappear again for like another month. Um, this video is going to be about why I've been gone. I know this is going to be a kind of weird change for a lot of you. It's going to be a big and weird change for me too, but I'm no longer going to be showing my face in any of my videos. Also, if some parts of my voice sounds different, it's because I am sick right now and I am inserting some voice recordings within the audio that I already recorded. So yeah, if I sound sick in certain areas and then I sound normal in other areas just bear with me but yeah i won't be showing my face from now on in any videos but and it's a big but it is megan the stallion type butt i am however going to still be an edgy elf but instead i'm going to have this guy help me out look at how cute she is i even drew her myself but mini me is going to be taking over the channel for now literally nothing else is changing it's just the fact that um i'm going to be talking through this character now instead of being on camera my content won't change i won't change just this will a lot of you are probably wondering why i'm making this decision and the truth is i don't want to go too deep into it i just kindly ask my viewers that they respectfully either support me through this very personal decision and change in my content or respectfully disagree. I will say that I understand why some of you might be a little disappointed and sad to not see me in my videos anymore but I'm still here just in voice version. Think of me as <laughs> the spirit of salem talking to you through the beyond yeah i'm still here but um yeah there's a pretty big bomb to drop on you guys and i understand that in this video i'm going to be talking about a lot like a lot i just want to finally open up about what i've been struggling with these past you know months why i'm making the change that i'm making what's been in my head and honestly it might be chaotic and super disorganized but i think i just need to really get this off of my brain and my chesticles so let's just get into this i guess the first thing is that um for the past year my channel was not mine i know that may come Vi as really weird but yeah i did not own the salem tovar youtube channel because i had signed away my rights to um a management and um i didn't have much control over it until da -da -da -da, you guessed it this month I feel like I can be a lot more open now and make content that I truly enjoy. The second thing that has kept me away and just kind of out of it is that, um, guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys and just say, like, I was not ever expecting my channel to reach the heights that it's been reaching. And it's just kind of crazy to see how my little channel that I started off doing makeup has kind of blown up. Which, I mean, like, I'm not complaining. I think it's absolutely awesome that I'm finally starting to get the recognition that I've worked really hard for. But I can't help but feel absolutely terrified. And knowing that my channel is changing and growing and getting bigger, I am terrified of disappointing everyone. I'm terrified of like, maybe, maybe I won't go viral anymore. Maybe, what if people get bored of me? What if like, what if I should just, I, I, I just can't, like I start to freak out. It's like that one scene in SpongeBob. Wait, I have an idea. Really? What is it? Let's leave. Yeah, I really do be like that. And then this turns into me taking super long breaks and hiatuses that last up two months. So much so that I'm pretty sure I've given half of my viewers abandonment issues at this point. My viewers really do be Oliver Twist in that one scene where he's like, Please suck, can I have some more? And then my inner saboteur is like, Hey! So clearly I can acknowledge these major faults in, in you know, my mind. But um, this is the thing that I struggle with, is that I start to rationalize and 
you know, I'm like, I'm gonna view this logically. And then I find reasons as to why I am right being in that state of mind and why I should just leave. Ah, uh, the joys of mental illness. So you're probably thinking when these feelings started to arise. And if I'm completely honest, I, I can't really tell you when. It's just been kind of like building up. It would come stronger and then go away and then come back. But something really, really good happened to me recently that kind of was the catalyst of everything that I'm going through right now. And that was the fact that I, Salem Tovar, am a featured creator on Playlist Live 2022 in Orlando, which is freaking amazing. And I am so incredibly excited, or at least I convinced myself I was, until my catastrophic thinking took a hold. I had to submit a photo of myself to go on the creator's roster. And guys, when I tell you I do not fit in, I do not fit in. See how everyone looks so nice and professional. Um, and then there's me. Which, yes, I did eat. And I, in fact, left no crumbs. But here's the thing about my thinking. <laughs> I immediately freaked out because I felt like I stood out a little too much. Have you guys heard of the saying, uh, the nail that sticks out gets the hammer or, or something like that? Because gang gang got the hammer and the wrench. Sorry about that. Sometimes the spirit of Nicki Minaj possesses me and uh, I just can't help it. Oh yeah, um, emo fairy that stuck out in front of everyone. Obviously, it's okay to stick out, be unique, and be different. But I couldn't help but feel like I wasn't... Hmm, how do I say this? That I didn't fit the definition of influencer enough to be invited to the event. Now, I want to make something clear. I don't necessarily think my content is bad or that I'm a bad content creator. I actually think I'm very funny, talented, witty, and very pretty. But the main problem is that when it comes to comparison, I start to maybe doubt that I'm those things. I am different, outspoken, and don't fit into the exact definition or imagery of the word influencer but I'm still worthy and just as valuable as a creator, just as anyone else on this platform. But I also feel simultaneously that I am not valuable enough. I almost feel like I'm an alien within the community, <laughs> but this can also be described as feeling imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is loosely defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. It disproportionately affects high achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishments and they question whether they're deserving of accolade. <laughs> Big SAT words, my brain. But yes, this is one of the big things that kind of led me to make the decision of changing up my content. I suffer from really, really intense imposter syndrome. I often feel like I just simply don't belong. No matter how many subscribers I have or the huge fan base that I have, I feel like I'm just kind of invalid. There are five types of imposter syndrome that go hand in hand in the way that you think. The first is the perfectionist, which means you have to be 100% perfect 100% of the time. You set insanely high goals for yourself and then when you don't meet them, you feel like a total complete failure. The second is the superwoman slash man and this type of person often works hard and overworks themselves to measure up to their other colleagues, but it's just a false cover up for their insecurity. They often get stressed out when they're not working and they find rest as being a huge waste of time. The third is the natural genius. This means if you're not good at something right away, you feel complete shame and guilt. They're kind of like perfectionists, but they don't judge themselves on high expectations. Instead, they judge themselves on how right they get stuff on the very first try. The fourth is the soloist. People who are the soloist are people who often struggle to ask for help because if you ask for help, then that somehow disproves your worth to do it by yourself and therefore means you didn't achieve anything. And lastly is the expert. Experts measure their competence based on what and how much they know or can do. Their biggest fear is being exposed as inexperienced or unknowledgeable. So they shy away from applying from jobs unless they meet every single requirement. And even at tasks that they are considered an expert in, they still feel like they're gonna fumble because they don't trust themselves enough. Can you guess which ones I suffer from? 
um yeah a little bit of every single one of them Ugh, i can't believe this this see this is why i don't want oh god this is why i leave because now i have to be vulnerable and be squishy and i i freaking hate that but um i'm going to expose my weaknesses to a bunch of random people on the internet that could easily use this against me We'll see how this goes. The ones that I struggle with the most is the perfectionist. I struggle with perfectionism because I just don't want to disappoint anyone. And whenever I get a fact wrong, or if I don't immediately credit someone on a source and people call me out on it, I feel like a complete utter failure and I want to quit right away because I didn't get it 100% perfect. Even though it's okay that I had a slip up and I can always fix it whenever I have time to address it. The second is the superwoman. I often feel like I have to work really, really hard until my mental capacity completely depletes just so I can prove to others that, hey, look guys, I am a worthy content creator. I am. So much so that I feel guilty not having PewDiePie numbers. It's like, sis, you need to calm down. And finally, the expert. This is the one that I struggle with the most because I know a lot of people look up to me to talk about very... Um, intense topics and people just expect me to be like a google search engine and even though i am a very knowledgeable person a lot of my stuff has to do with opinion based um logic rather than uh facts so when people send me articles on stuff that i've never even freaking heard of and they're like do a video on this i'm like I'm sorry guys, but I literally don't know Elon Musk's eating schedule and how that is correlated to Grimes being part of the Illuminati. Like, I'm not that knowledgeable, damn. And it's even worse when people are like, you're so reliable and always right, and you're the number one person I go to for news because you're the only source I trust. I'm like, oh sh dude, don't do that. Don't do that, oh my God. Like, literally don't do that. You know who I trust for my news? the um breaking bikini bottom news you know that fish announcer from spongebob well they have a tiktok page and um that's how i get my news and they uh, yeah that's that's how i get my news it gives me chills it, it, it dead ass gives me chills just talking about it because it's like dude i'm literally a human i am not an ai who will always be right on everything i will fail you eventually and let's talk about the fact that I am not the only person who feels this way. Some of the other creators that I talk to have shared their feelings with me about feeling inadequate or feeling like they're not deserving enough for a platform. Which, I mean, there's a huge difference between humility and understanding that there is a privilege to having a platform, but then there's also a huge difference between completely bashing yourself and leaving every single month because you feel like you're not good enough for it just because someone else's success is far bigger than yours. Which then makes you deadly afraid to venture into other avenues in your content. And the imposter syndrome just gets you really good. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm not the only person who has dealt with this. And a lot of your favorite content creators feel the same way that I do. We just never say anything. Don't believe me? Well, it's a good thing I'm collaborating with one of my fellow content creator friends. It's Keisha, here to talk about her personal experience on this whole freaking mess. Hey everyone, for those of you guys who don't know me, I go by the name It's Keisha here on YouTube. I make content surrounding commentary and I thought today I can share with you guys a bit of my experience. So I'm currently in this weird place. Some people call it a funk, I don't know. I'm in this weird space of like knowing what kind of content I want to create, kind of. But then my audience are, I, I feel they either enjoy it or they don't, which takes a toll on me and my mental health. And I know I shouldn't let it get to that point, but unfortunately it does. I thought that I could join you guys today and kind of share a bit of my experience. I do want to start off by talking about imposter syndrome. I definitely have experienced that um, during my journey here on YouTube. And I feel like it's just a part of people's life in general, um, if you put like the career to the side. Um, so yeah, I've definitely dealt with imposter syndrome and doubting my abilities. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's happened a lot of the times because I do at the end of the day believe in myself and believe in my source and just believe in what it is that I'm pushing out on the internet but I have recently been going through it where I've just been doubting my content and just overthinking things and also comparing myself to other creators like it can even be a creator in a different genre of YouTube but I'm still kind of like comparing myself when it comes to maybe numbers or when it comes to like aesthetic and just you know the different things that 
make content creators creators you know so um it's hard i can't even lie to you as much as you know people see social media as like an easy job it definitely isn't an easy job but it definitely is easier compared to like the you know the regular nine to fives no one's gonna doubt that for sure that's you know that's the fact but um when your job is focused surrounding numbers and focused on image you know it does take a toll on your mentor and it certainly has especially for me within i would say this year this year has been crap for me i'll be honest with you i haven't been on my a game nearly as much as i used to be um i'm still trying i'm still pushing but it has been a journey for me that's for sure creative burnout is a real thing i think nearly every creator has felt burnt out but specifically those who uh whose content requires research whose content requires more in depth uh who those creators who are consistent aka myself i've been consistent from the beginning i used to post every single day even when i had college i would just post after college i would always make it work and with that came burnouts i was enjoying it but at the same time was I really? That was a question I was constantly asking myself. Um, so yeah, I've experienced, you know, creative burnouts and it's, it's really terrible. I think I'm actually low-key going through that now. I'm just in a weird stage. Um, and I think that for me right now, it's all about doing what makes me happy. But at the same time, you have to understand that your audience are here for a reason. So you kind of got to like, you know, make yourself happy 100% and also make them happy. Um, but yeah, I've had a burnout this year, not only through YouTube, but with my music as well. I've just had this creative block as well where I can't think of anything. So it's definitely difficult. Um, still wouldn't change this for the world. I, I do appreciate it. And I wake up every day and I'm very grateful. Um, but you know, as somebody who was super duper creative, could think of something on the spot, I've been slacking and lacking. I'm not gonna like crap talk myself completely because I am that bitch still to this day, period. <laughs> um, but yeah, right now it just isn't the best for me and I thought I would be perfect to be incorporated in this video because I'm expressing the viewpoint of somebody who, yes, is doing pretty well for themselves, but at the same time just doesn't feel it. Just doesn't feel it um i do feel like i felt the pressure to go viral uh, i don't know what you guys see as viral to be honest i have a video with like one million views i think it's a video on shane dawson <laughs> um i do think there's a pressure to go viral though um i think it's when you see some of your own peers doing their thing and killing it you it's not that I feel jealous of them or envious, envious of them because I do end up watching their videos and I'm happy with the content they've released. It's just, you kind of wish that was you, especially if you haven't really had your time. Uh, I still don't feel like I've had my moment. I, I I look at certain creators and I'm like, damn, they're really, <clears throat> they're really in their bag. They're really killing it. But then I just look at myself like, good, great. But I haven't had that moment where it's just you know like skyrocketed or anything and i'm just kind of waiting for that moment hence why i'm not giving up and hence why i'm really being consistent with it because i believe my time will come soon i think everyone has their time but yeah i do think there's a pressure to go viral for sure do i feel that pressure now not as much no it would be nice 100 percent. but with going viral comes a lot of pressure as well which i'm not sure i'm even ready for so yeah i definitely do compare myself comparison is a thief of joy um i, I know that statement but do i apply it i don't know I don't like to compare myself to anyone but i found that this year specifically i have been comparing myself and it's not necessarily to people who look like me which can become very dangerous um but it can be looks wise it can be contents wise it can be success it can be numbers all of these things right it takes a toll on your mental health and especially as somebody who just likes to watch youtube in general it doesn't help that the first thing i see sometimes is numbers um and i kind of need to step out of that 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 headspace because it's becoming very unhealthy for me and my mind is just being clogged up by the wrong things um but yeah that's a bit of my experience to be honest with you guys it hasn't been easy it's been super duper fun though when it's good it's really good and when it's bad for me it's really bad um i don't really get affected by hate comment as much anymore like everyone's called me the n-word at this point everyone's slated my appearance it's okay like i've kind of dealt with it now um but you know yeah that's pretty much my story hopefully it picks up hopefully uh, i find my calling because i think maybe that might be a part of it i think i know what it is that i want to do but at the same time i just need to really go for it so i think i'm just asking myself a bunch of questions having a trial and error moment and yeah we'll see from there hopefully this video helped <laughs> and yes i'll catch you guys real soon whenever the hell that is over on my channel of course <laughs> bye
You know how in the beginning of the video I said that I fear good things? Well, I mean, there's a reason for that, especially when it comes to the social media world. Me and Keisha mentioned in this video how, even though things are going well, there is this tendency to hyper-focus on all the negative. It's hard to appreciate a hundred good DMs when there's just one DM that's telling you that you're worth nothing and calling you a racial slur. It's hard to want to have the energy to create different content when you feel like it's just gonna be rejected so why bother even starting it this is the greatest downfall to many creators on this platform there's the good the bad but mostly the ugly whether it comes to comparisons forever chasing virality or chasing validation burnout seems to take a major hold on you and then well you end up leaving which is what i do me and my sister often talk about how being a creator is kind of like getting invited to a party. You dress up, hype yourself up, get into the mood to party, and you feel great enough to bring a cake for everyone attending the party. And when you arrive at the party, you give people the cake and for some reason, um, everyone just seems to um, hate it and smash it in front of your face and they tell you how horrible the cake was some people may complain about the color some people may complain about the flavor and nitpick at maybe the font of the lettering on the cake and some will dead ass throw away the cake right in front of your face even though it's okay for people to not like the flavors or criticize the cake it still doesn't feel good because you stayed up all night making it with all your hard work and you still wanted some sort of recognition that you just wanted everyone to receive something nice but it seemed to not have gone over well this is the exact spot you're put in every single time you make any sort of content as a content creator so then you pack up your stuff and you leave the party and you start to go over what exactly went wrong well maybe it's because the font was too weird the color wasn't right and the flavor wasn't that good ah here it is, it didn't appeal to the mass audience. After all, that's what you're supposed to be doing as a content creator, trying to gain the majority of the population's favoritism. It definitely can't be a new, different flavor because that can turn people off. The icing has to be a certain way that's presentable so that people can actually feel an appetite looking at it and want to indulge in it. It can't be too different or showy. We have to make it basic and appeal to everyone's taste. Okay, well, the majority of the nation likes chocolate cake. So let's stick to that. It seems to work every single time someone else does it. Just stick within the lines and play it safe so that you can appease the majority of the people going to the party. I think you guys know where I'm headed with this. It's no coincidence that there are carbon copies of many influencers out there who kind of do the same thing and all blend together. A lot of people wonder why they have such big followings and why they're famous, but the truth is, they kind of have figured out how to gain success in a way where it appeals to the majority audience. They were the ones who brought the chocolate cake to the party. Sure, not everyone's gonna like it, but the majority do. And as long as you get the majority to like your cake, you're basically set to always be invited to the next party. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, you can make a cake based on whose party you're going to and what the theme is and so on and so forth. But here's the thing, the majority of parties that are going on right now are ones that are hosted by Gen Z. And guys, as a Gen Zer myself, no, I won't say Zoomer, I think that sounds stupid. You guys know that I am not too fond of my generation. And that's not me trying to be like those memes and those people who are like, I was born in the wrong generation. I was born in the wrong generation. I wish I was around in the 1300s where there's no clean water or electricity and everyone died from the plague. Because sis trust me the boomer generation and gen xers they be going through some else and i'm glad that i'm not part of that generation no hate no hate just saying but just as every generation kind of has its good stuff every generation also has its very very bad stuff you know the good the bad and 
the mostly ugly. And you guys know I am not shy about calling Gen Z out for their hypocritical views because I really truly believe that we are by far the most hypocritical generation. And that's gonna piss a lot of people off, but that's because our generation is also <laughs> very, very egotistical and think that we're the ones solving world peace, we're solving racism, we're solving all the bad, when in reality, we're unconsciously actually adding to it and making it worse. This is the same generation that claims that they're going to take down Vladimir Putin and take down the government, but also can't ask for ketchup at the McDonald's line. Like, y'all really need to sit down. I think our generation is a lot more aware of really deep-rooted generational traumas and deep-rooted problems but because we're so chronically online and so freaking sensitive and just the way that we are is so egotistical and entitled we never seem to actually get around to solving anything i think people need to start noticing that complaining about stuff online isn't the same as activism and it's not the same as actually going outside and doing something about it i understand gen z's intentions truly are good at the end of the day but but the way they bring awareness and light to situations that need more light and awareness is really wrong and ass backwards especially because i'm not gonna lie a lot of <laughs> a lot of um gen z's problems tend to focus on sh that literally does not f matter for those of you who don't know i have ptkophobia which is literally <laughs> This is gonna sound kind of strange to some of you guys, but eh, oh well. So, uh, <laughs> pitagophobia is the phobia of apes and monkeys. I developed the fear when I was young when I heard the story of how like an ape ripped the face off of their owner and stuff. And ever since, I've just been very, very um, fearful of them. Now everyone in my family knows I have this fear and knows that memes or funny videos of people playing with small monkeys or like apes riding bicycles and stuff freak me the hell out. And so they send them to me just, you know, for fun. Just to, you know, uh, rock my nerves a bit. And don't worry, I'm totally chill with that. And I shared a screenshot of a monkey video that one of my friends sent me as a joke. And I jokingly said, guys, don't send me monkey videos because they make me very uncomfortable. Also trying to poke back at my friend. But then I got this super long DM about how I'm a horrible person and that I deserve to rot in hell and that I'm disgusting and I believe in animal cruelty because how dare I speak of our ancestors that way and if it wasn't for monkeys and apes that I wouldn't be here and be able to say those things. I just want you guys to like soak that up for a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I mean by people often waste their time on sh that surely does not matter. And Gen Z and chronically online people often hyper focus on problems that honestly don't really need to be solved. But when it comes to really big problems, all everyone ever does is complain. When in reality, you as a consumer have a lot of power in deciding what problems truly can be solved or not. This includes whether you shop from Sheen or not, deciding to not shop at certain stores, or even getting to decide where you put your time and energy and money to and towards in order to make certain people famous. Even if you don't think that you're actually doing that, you are unconsciously. When Gen Z is on the right track about, oh, we should probably not shop at Sheen. And if you shop at Shein, we're gonna attack you. Even though this rule only applies to certain creators and certain people. There seems to be no consistency. And also, there's a huge lack of balance in these societal social media rules that Gen Z has made up to keep content creators in place. Despite doing the same crap content creators are doing in their own personal time. You have no idea how many TikToks I've scrolled into that talk about how if their friend group chat texts were leaked, they would also be canceled. Like, hmm, y'all really need to keep the same energy. But like I said, Gen Z has a problem with being hypocritical and they pick and choose who gets to face consequences and who doesn't. And they also pick and choose who gets the backhand of cancel culture and have it work 
And who gets to go off with a clean slate and start a whole new career? I'm looking at you, James Charles and Logan Paul. I'm just gonna be honest and say, for a generation that claims to love diversity, creators of color are treated so unfairly compared to their white counterparts, which is something that I always talk about because to me it's very important for people to realize that people are not as graceful or merciful with creators of color as they are with white creators. And I do believe that this honestly stems off of fan bases. Well, I should say the lack thereof, I guess, because it seems that fan bases now are completely dead. How is it possible that people can have millions of followers on TikTok and then when they do a meet and greet, no one shows up? And yes, this actually did happen in real life. This happened to Grace Africa on TikTok. Grace Africa is a content creator on TikTok that has 1.4 million followers. She mostly makes comedy TikToks. Well, on June 25th, Grace Africa set up a meet and greet to meet her followers. I mean, makes sense. She has 1.4 million followers. Why wouldn't a lot of people come see her? But, um, this video garnered 38.1 million views. And not because there was a swarm of people coming to her meet and greet, but actually the opposite. Absolutely no one showed up. And what do you think the comments were? No, I would have loved to see you. Oh girl, I would have gone. Where are you? I'm coming right now. And one person actually said the truth, which is, y'all saying I would have gone. Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you? Claudia is spitting facts because literally. Not gonna lie, this video also made me kind of freak out about my appearance that's upcoming in September for Playlist Live. Cause then I'm like, damn, I mean, I have a following, but I mean, it could at the end of the day be that absolutely no one shows up. It's almost as if numbers truly don't matter anymore. But there is still a disparity going on within the creator realm when it comes to fan bases and loyalty. There seems to be cherry picking in who we give our efforts to despite having large amount of numbers of followers. Which means social media is now taking a huge shift and entering this new era where you could have like 24 million followers and it doesn't mean jack squidly diddly you know what i mean but for some creators you could have a hundred million or a hundred thousand but it really just depends on your particular fan base i said earlier that gen z likes to pick and choose which creators they decide to make famous and which creators they put their effort into and which creators to cancel and i did say that this usually happens unconsciously and i do believe that there is a disparity between creators of color and white creators when it comes to fan bases and how unconsciously these consumers tend to flock and be loyal only to white creators. We claim that we're the most diverse and we're so open to body types and this and that, yet all of our icons are people who are super skinny and tall like Gigi Hadid and Bella Hadid. There is a basic formula to all of the creators that are famous now, which is to be white, young, and rich. Ah, I can sense some of you are starting to get uncomfortable but this is just the truth. When I look back at YouTube history, even though people were a lot more vulgar, there was actually a lot more diversity back in the days when it came to the big YouTube creators. There were people like Superwoman, Ryan Hicka, Just Rain, Michelle Phan, Kingsley, and so much more. But when it comes to Gen Z consumerism and making people famous, who are now the big faces of social media, they all kind of blend together. For example, when I see the Hype House, why is there only one creator of color in there? I mean, just look at one of the most popular content houses there is right now, which is the Hype House. I'm just gonna leave this picture here. You see the uh, insane lack of diversity? For those of you who don't know what the Hype House is, the Hype House is a collective of teenage TikTok personalities based in Los Angeles, California, as well as the name of the mansion where some of the creators live. Dude, this is literally based in LA, which is like a total melting pot, and these are the creators they gathered? It just ain't adding up. 
They did eventually add three creators of color within the hype house, but even then that was after a lot of people were complaining about the lack of diversity. Which then in turn makes a lot of people angry because then they define it as forced diversity. But here's the thing, forced diversity wouldn't be a thing if people were more open-minded in the first place then it would simply just be normal to have a more diverse cast for these types of things. But that ultimately is up to the consumer. And that has definitely changed a lot. Hi, my name is Penny Tovar and I have been a content creator for almost 10 years now. I started when I was 18 years old and I'm 27 now and my channel currently has 800,000 subscribers. Something that I have noticed being a creator for almost a decade is I think the biggest change that I've seen is just the consumer base. Um, it used to be millennials, but now it's Gen Z. And I have noticed that Gen Z is very different. And I feel like the person who really tapped into Gen Z, what Gen Z likes and what they are looking for was Emma Chamberlain. I call it the Emma Chamberlain effect because I feel like she just found that sweet spot of what Gen Z likes. From what I have noticed over the years is that like older millennial viewers, they like content that kind of gives them substance and something to learn, something that adds value to their lives, you know, whether it be like old school beauty tutorials or things of that sort. But I have noticed that Gen Z in particular, you don't necessarily have to be of substance or add value to their life. They either want you to be really, really, really attractive or really, 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 really funny. And if you are attractive and funny, then you hit the gold pot. Gold pot, is that a thing? <laughs> gold stash, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Jackpot, jackpot. <laughs> you hit the jackpot. And that is exactly why the relevancy of all these YouTubers started dying out, you know, like the Tyler Oakleys, the Connor Frantas, the, you know, the Zoella, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Those kinds of creators, they died out because Gen Z wanted, obviously people who were younger that they could relate to. And Gen Z really likes like high paced, lots of cuts, um, lots of short content, which is like the ex extreme opposite of what social media used to be, you know? I feel like back in the day, people really liked the chiller, long form videos and now people just really want you to get to the point and even then a 30 second video might be way too long for their time so basically i feel like the reason that the internet has changed so much and you know these types of fan bases have also changed so much is because the fans themselves are a completely different generation now. You know, I'll use myself as an example. I'm 27 years old. Um, I was born in 1995, so I'm a cusper. Um, I'm not really a millennial, because trust me, I do not relate at all to a lot of the things they <laughs> do and say. But when it comes to Gen Zers, I don't really fully identify at all with what they do or say as well. So I'm definitely in a sweet spot in the middle between the two. I myself, don't like to follow many people at all unless they're adding like you know some sort of value to my life like a sewing channel because i want to learn how to sew or a cooking channel because i want to learn how to cook whereas people younger than me you know like true gen z they will only follow people just because they like how they dress. I relate to millennials because I do like the older school kind of content where I can gain value in my life, you know, whether that's a cooking channel or a sewing channel or whatever. But I also do relate to the Gen Z consumer base because on my Instagram, like, I mostly follow people that I like what they look like. Like, I don't even know what their names are, but I like their outfits or I like the way they do their hair. I like the way they do their makeup. And that's like the sole reason that I follow them. So I understand from both sides. People are always saying, oh, TikTok changed the internet. TikTok changed the way we consume. TikTok this, TikTok that. It's not TikTok 
it's Gen Z. The majority of users on TikTok are Gen Z. They are the ones that made the app what it is right now. So when people say TikTok this, TikTok that, they actually mean Gen Z. At least that's the way that I look at it. Obviously, TikTok itself as the app does have unique aspects that is completely different from other apps like, you know, short form content and that never ending doom scroll. However, TikTok itself as an app, it does have a very specific aspect to it. Before TikTok, you know, people used to follow creators very closely because they had a very like close relationship with that creator, you know, like they really had like an intimate view into that person's life. But now with TikTok, since short form content is the thing now you can't really scratch more than the surface with short form content and because of that there isn't really that raw deep genuine connection that you could have you could have had in the past with a youtuber and that's not to say that all tiktok content is shallow and vapid but a lot of it that goes viral doesn't really have that deep of a substance like it's an attractive person dancing that would never do well on youtube you know what i mean because youtube is a platform where there's more deeper substance to it whereas tiktok something as vapid as you know someone doing a thirst trap could get millions of views so i i do believe it's a very unique mix of tiktok itself short form content you know that lack of deep substance and the way that gen z favors that kind of content it's almost like this positive feedback cycle and as a content creator you know if you want to stay relevant especially when you've been in the game for a very long time like you, you have to make changes. You have to study what do people like. You have to study what's the new audience. You have to study like, how can I be myself, but in the lens of this new way that people like to consume. And uh, it's a work in progress. Um, it can be draining, it can get really, really draining because I feel like, why am I trying so hard? <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I'm so used to seeing the viral TikToks on my feed that I feel like if I don't have something that is viral or viral-ish, then I must be a failure as a creator. Like, nobody likes this. I'm going to delete it. Like, why did, he, why did I even post this? I feel like this viral video era that we live in, it feels like everything is viral, which makes it feel like nothing is viral, if that makes sense. And unless you're making millions and millions of numbers, then you must be a failure, you know? And that's how I feel. And it made me feel like garbage for such a long time. But now I'm at a point where I just create content that makes me happy and content that I feel like is good to put out there in the universe. And that now I'm at a point where I just make content that makes me happy and content that I think people could benefit from you know in the sense that you know i like to i like to talk about beauty and fashion and i like to also talk about you know sustainable fashion as well as eco beauty and um those are the things that i want to talk about and if people don't care for it that's okay because i because i do <laughs> so yeah but to get to the point where i am now where i am very comfortable confident and happy where i am it took a lot a lot of mental breakdowns like gaslighting myself um but to get to the point where i am right now just being content with where i am and what i do without finding validation in numbers it has taken years years of reparation unlearning and relearning to make content for myself and not for numbers Old school content creators made content for their audience, whereas new school content creators make content to make numbers. And for that reason, I feel like I'm always going to be an old school content creator at heart.
Whenever I think of the like term influencer, I'm sure that there's a certain image that goes inside your head when you think of influencer. Probably Bretman Rock, Addison Ray, you know, people who just seem like they are meant to be in the front of a magazine. I think of clean skin and nice clothes. I think of how they're always involved in photos where there's a bright blue sky surrounded by just backdrops of places I've never seen before. Or at least places I don't think I'd ever be allowed to be in because we're in a completely different tax bracket. But this type of lifestyle, so many people judge and say that it's fake and this and that, yet everybody wants it. That's why the term influencer is such a loose term because everybody wants to be famous now. I said in the beginning of the video that I feel like just because of how common influencer culture is now that everyone seems to just blend together. No one really seems to truly stick out anymore, especially not how they did back in the day when YouTube was like the thing, like the only platform where random everyday people could really make it big in the YouTube platform as iconic creators. And because of this, it's really hard for consumers to have the ability to differentiate whether the person that they are watching is genuine or not because there's so many freaking creators now. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like one of the big differences in how social media used to be and how social media is now is that back then it really was everyday ordinary people being able to share their content and make it big but i feel like now on social media you need to meet the requirements that the internet has made up you have to be hot you have to be rich you have to be funny but you also have to be humble and you also have to be able to be informed enough to speak out on very serious topics but you also can't be too outspoken basically what people are looking for is like perfect human noid that can be the perfect entertainer machine that makes absolutely no mistakes and honestly these standards are really new and I think because of these new impossible standards, a lot of OG content creators are quitting YouTube and quitting all types of platforms because they're just, it's too strict. And here's the thing with restrictiveness, rigidness, and perfectionism. It cancels out anything that could possibly be authentic and genuine because being genuine and authentic doesn't equate to being perfect. It equates to being real. When I think of real, authentic, genuine YouTubers or content creators in general, they are definitely rare and they are the unicorns, but they do exist. However, they keep leaving and dropping like flies. I'm sure many of you will agree with me when I say Jenna Marbles was one of these content creators. She truly was the unicorn of the internet. Jenna Marbles is an American former YouTuber who spent 10 years on YouTube and had over 19 million subscribers. Jenna started on YouTube in 2010 where she posted her first video titled Charles Franklin Marbles is a sad sad man which had more than 1.9 million views at the time since me mentioning this. Since then, Jenna has uploaded hundreds of videos on her channel. Most of her videos have done really, really well with the majority of them having over a million views. And it's pretty crazy to say, but overall her channel has more than 1 billion views. And she rose to notoriety with her how to trick people into thinking you're good looking, a video that has like 67 million views now that she posted in 2010. Jenna moved to Boston to attend Suffolk University where she earned a BS in psychology. And then she obtained her master's degree in sports psychology and counseling. She also used to be what is called a go-go dancer and also a cage dancer for nightclubs. She has a huge soft spot for dogs and a lot of her content had to do with her just sharing what was on her mind, her dogs, and life in general. And pretty soon Jenna Marbles came to be known as the queen of YouTube as her content started to take form as what we all know her now to be with very unique and random content such as I gave myself a Claire's makeover, giving myself ramen nails, I want a new face, trying to blend it with my green screen, camouflaging myself into a chair. Oh, 
and as well as transforming into my dog. However, in 2020, Jenna Marbles made a video called Taking Accountability. People began calling her out for a skit she made a long time ago where she portrayed herself as Nicki Minaj on her channel and wore blackface. Another video of hers that was being brought to light was when Jenna used racial terms and stereotypes against Asian people. Jenna showed both clips in this video and apologized profusely for both of them. She also apologized for being misogynistic in a few other videos in which she talked badly about women who slept with a lot of men. In this entire video, Jenna was on the brink of tears saying that she was genuinely sorry and that she has clearly moved on and grown from many mistakes that she's made in the past. Ultimately, she ended the video with saying that she just wanted to move on from this channel, but that she just doesn't see herself existing on her channel anymore. Although Jenna was very wrong in what she did back then, I think everyone can agree that out of all the YouTuber apologies that are such bullcrap, Jenna's was very genuine. And with her leaving the internet, a lot, a lot of people were heartbroken. And again, I think a big reason as to why so many people were so hurt is because she truly had a dedicated fan base and she truly was a genuine person and she truly was a genuine content creator who was genuinely sorry. But like I said earlier in this video, cancel culture never really seems to choose the right people because shortly afterward Shane Dawson made a video with the same title about taking accountability now he was gonna change finally and we all saw that he never did change and he never will change and yet he has a bunch of followers still and it seems that cancel culture will never take this man down but for some reason his fan base and people who support him and watch him think that this man was as genuine in his apology as Jenna, which then blur the lines of exactly what I'm talking about. How can you tell who is genuine and who isn't? Especially in the social media world where you don't know these people personally. You might think you do, but you really don't. The only information you have is based off of what other people have told them, what they themselves have admitted to, and what you have seen and observed in their behavior. If you've been watching me for a really long time, then you probably know that I'm not... I just... I, I can't get behind Shane Dawson. I just really can't. I've always thought of him as the prime example of someone who is disingenuine, especially in the social media realm. And honestly, there are many reasons as to why I can't take his apologies seriously. Because he has shown time and time again that he doesn't learn from his behavior and he doesn't bother becoming a better person after every mistake he's made, unlike Jenna Marbles. He still lies to this day about being poor when he literally lives in a mansion and has Gucci slides. For some reason, his inner friend circle consists of people like Jeffree Star and Trisha Paytas, people who just aren't the best human beings. I have a very unpopular opinion when it comes to inner circles. I think you can be cordial with people that you disagree with and people who aren't the most favorable people to be around. However, it's a difference to be cordial with people you disagree with and then be straight up friends with them. I guess what I'm saying is you kind of are what you attract. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Shane has also constantly been a bad friend in general to many people, and he continues to treat his own fiance like pure crap. Ryland, blink twice if you need help. Honestly, don't even get me started on how Shane treats Ryland. I could make a whole video on that on its own because it bothers me so bad. And people tend to always ignore how he treats other people in general and how he likes to profit off of people who genuinely need help and then he just tosses them aside once he got what he wanted. Are we just gonna forget EC? Can't say her name or else I'll get demonetized. But the list goes on and on and on, and I don't really need to try to make a case as to why you shouldn't like him. If you want to forgive him and believe his apologies and believe that he is genuine, then that's your prerogative. And everyone has their own meters on forgiveness. And if yours is high enough to see past Shane's bullcrap, then you are a better person than me, I guess. But I can't help but feel like he's just incredibly disingenuine. Yet he still to this day has hardcore followers, people who would die for this man. And he is one of the OG YouTubers as well. And his story is similar just like all these other iconic OG YouTubers where they really were just plain mundane people who grabbed a camera one day and the rest is history. 
But if I'm being honest, they just don't build them like that anymore. All these influencers are so privileged and so just mind empty. I don't know how to explain it and I don't mean to be rude, but I, I'm not sure I know how to say it in a more kind way because it's, it's, it's just true. It's just true. A lot of what's popular nowadays and a lot of influencers who have platforms now, I feel like have them by default. A lot of them don't really have personality or anything else to offer and honestly I can't blame them because the second any one of these people show personality is the second that they get cancelled. Remember, bringing chocolate cake to the party is the safest and most efficient way to garner the mass audience's approval. So why would you stray away from that? One mistake that I think Jenna Marbles did is that she chose to be truthful and authentic and genuine with the wrong demographic. And see, Jenna Marbles is now a discontinued flavor. People can talk about how great the cake was at every event they go to, but the cake will never show back up. But the truth is, they didn't savor it or cherish it when that flavor was out and being offered to everyone. So why are they switching up now? And I just want to say, how many more people are we going to be doing this to? How many more flavors are we going to be offered that we absolutely love but not actually truly cherish until it's completely gone and then we just sit there and complain about how we should have had more of that flavor before it was gone because then we're going to be left with more generic flavors it'll get stale real quick and i can't help but feel like people are just getting used to this new thing of just having these very bland and boring creators on this platform but what people don't realize it's because genuine and real authentic creators who own up to their mistakes and take accountability and truly change after their mistakes are being pushed off the platform so here's the the dilemma that the majority of your favorite content creators are going through right now but just aren't saying anything do i choose to be genuine and have people hate me or be fake so that everyone can accept and love me because they're so fearful of being canceled and they're so fearful that if they are truly their authentic selves that their audience won't accept them and honestly it's a huge mind game and it's really 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 exhausting and honestly i don't blame jenna for leaving it's mentally and physically draining I try to always please everyone and it hurts even worse when the cake that you take so long to bake keeps getting rejected now i'm sure you guys are sensing a little bit of projection from me and that's because i a hundred million bajillion percent feel the same way Except some days I can't even bring myself to have the energy to even look up a cake recipe or or bake a cake. Then, you know, sometimes I, I feel like I don't even want to bring cake. Man, I don't even want to go to this event. You know, everything that I've mentioned so far in this video are the things that have contributed to me wanting to leave and also kind of from me wanting to stop showing my face to my audience. I do struggle from severe imposter syndrome, a huge problem with burnout. I feel like there's absolutely no diversity so therefore no platform for me truly to find a place where i belong whenever someone is truly genuine on this platform or at least tries to be themselves they automatically get punished and ridiculed and this new demographic of gen z picking and choosing who they want to be famous and who they cancel i feel like i can't even enjoy my time on this platform because i never know when it's going to be stripped away from me and trust me this mental gymnastics and me trying to balance this logic and all this other type of stuff just completely makes me feel like wanting to leave I feel like the difference between male and female creators is that male creators are often allowed to kind of mess up as much as they want and they're allowed to grow. It's considered character development for them, but whenever a female creator messes up and wants to grow from it, um, yeah, that's not how it works. And I feel like it's even worse when it's a creator of color. So as a creator of color who is a, who was um, born said uh, with two X chromosomes and stuff, I kind of feel like I'm um, screwed. And the pressure to be perfect 
for me is at an all-time high and the bigger my platform gets the pressure continues to build and build until I kind of you know behind the screen pop now there has been many times where on my channel I've been very vulnerable and open and honest but unfortunately it's been kind of used against me which hey I understand that every time you be vulnerable on the internet it's gonna be used against you and I don't really regret opening up but I often struggle with how much I want to open up. When I say that my weaknesses and vulnerability or opinions are used against me, I don't mean it literally. Well, sometimes it's literally literally, but sometimes people use what I say against me in a way that a lot of people wouldn't think it's using it against me. Let me explain. I feel like a lot of people view me as the type of content creator that's here to cancel everyone and be righteous and try to call people out for their bullcrap. I find that every so often I get hate comments calling me a snowflake or an SJW or a radicalist even though I never once have talked about my political views on this channel. And you know what? I never will. Ever. But if there's one thing that I hate that people do is put me in a box especially one that is of extremism. I truly believe in order to have the best content and to overall be a pretty decent human being, you need to have balance of both the good and bad. That's why a lot of my opinions I feel confuse a lot of people. For example, people automatically assume that just because I'm a bigger person and I'm a person of color that I'm automatically looped into the body positivity movement. But if you've seen my content in the past, I actually freaking hate that movement and I'm a lot for more body neutrality instead. And because I rejected the body positivity movement in one video, I know that there's a couple of people out there who now think I'm on a completely other side of the political compass. Now supposedly I hate women and, and bigger people when that's not the case. I just don't like the movement. I think the movement can be better. I'm trying to be balanced in my opinion. It's kind of the same way as I think people should be allowed to get plastic surgery and post about it and no one owes you an explanation as to why they're getting a nose job or liposuction or so on and so forth. I don't think getting plastic surgery automatically equates to you hating yourself and if it's gonna help you live a better life, go ahead and do it. But I also don't think it's fair to promote it to young people and also lie about it because that's super scummy to do. But it seems that no matter what message I'm trying to convey to the mass audience, it always seems to get misconstrued and it causes extreme burnout for me because it feels like, why am I doing this when the true message I'm trying to get out there just keeps getting completely demolished by little slip ups and people cherry picking things throughout my video or what I'm wearing or my makeup just to counter argue with my points. I feel like I confuse a lot of people with my opinions because they're not black and white. Instead, I will always try to be in the gray. There is a paradox that I live my life by and it truly has helped me become the person that I am today. Which is, you know, two things can be true at once. The Kardashians might not be the best example for young women when it comes to promoting crash diets, plastic surgery, and fast fashion. But they are a good example in the sense that they are incredibly good businesswomen. They really do know how to sell to a market and they know exactly what their demographics want from them. This is an example where two things can be true at the same time. It's true that yeah they're not the best example but it's also true that they're really good at what they do even if what they're really good at doing is kind of bad. And I refuse to be extremist in my opinions because the truth is in the majority of things that I've talked about on my platform both has good and both has bad. Two things can be true at once. But I feel this type of thinking doesn't really get through to people who kind of have an extreme mindset watching my videos and they spend way too long over analyzing or trying to figure out where I truly stand on a situation and they can't really understand that someone can be for both sides and not just one. Which I now realize can piss a lot of people off but hey that's just kind of how my brain works. And honestly guys this is probably the biggest thing that has really made me feel like I want to leave. I feel like I've just officially burnt out from trying to explain myself, from trying to clear things up, and I'm just kind of tired of having to defend myself, and I'm especially tired of having to 
explain how I am as a person and how I view my content, how I make it. You know, I could bring the chocolate cake to every video, but I just don't work that way, which honestly stresses me out because I just feel honestly incredibly misunderstood. Growing up as an extremely, extremely weird and neurodivergent kid was already exhausting on its own. But to make my platform and make content based on research and my opinions and all these other factors is really exhausting. And honestly, I can't even bring myself to make makeup looks anymore. As a neurodivergent person, I experience burnout a lot more frequently than a typical person would. But also as a neurodivergent person, I love talking, especially talking about things that I'm really interested in. So this is kind of where we get back to the very beginning of the video. I don't want to leave. I definitely want to stay, but I also can't bring myself to do a makeup look every video. And I know what you're thinking. You don't have to do makeup. You don't even have to dress up. We just want to see you. Well, that's the thing. I just don't want to be seen anymore. Especially when even my looks have been used against me. Where what I'm talking about is things of substance, yet all anyone can focus on is my weight. And honestly, that really sucks. And it really, really gets to me. It just isn't for me anymore, if I'm being honest. Well, it's not for me for now. This change, like I said earlier in the video, is it's not necessarily temporary but it is until i feel like it's right to show my face again because there is a lot of things out of my control and um <laughs> I am a person who needs control or else I'll go crazy. But I know that's not how it works and a lot of my fate and success lies in the hands of random people on the internet, which is very, very scary to me. Because all the points I brought up earlier in this video about how being genuine is dead, how cancel culture picks and chooses who gets a career and who doesn't, how people give certain YouTubers a clean slate, you know, like Shane Dawson and stuff. Every Everything is so incredibly unpredictable and a lot of creators are starting to feel the way that I feel. You know, it's Keisha and Penny and a lot of other creators out there are feeling the same way that I feel which is all these factors and uncertainty is very scary and I feel like maybe I should take an extremely extremely long break or possibly um, never come back. But again, speaking of the paradox where two things can be true at once, there is also another side of that which is screw it i want to make content that i really really like and if people don't like it then who cares i'm really happy for creators like penny who have found this sweet spot and you know i really hope that one day i can achieve that too it's just kind of terrifying knowing that it may not work and me taking this step to no longer show my face and instead be a commentary channel with an avatar is really scary for me. But I know ultimately it's one step closer to becoming the creator that I really want to be. It's kind of crazy to think back on just how long I've been feeling this way and how long I've been gone. It's been about like two months and this feeling has kind of started ever since I first hit my first 300,000 subscribers. I never, ever, ever thought I would even get to 500,000 subscribers. I've always wanted to have a presence on social media, but I didn't think that I would actually be perceived in stuff. And then when I got invited to Playlist Live as a featured creator, I totally just freaked out because it was kind of a confirmation that I am now being acknowledged outside of the internet and it just makes me feel very uncomfy. Again, don't get me wrong, I'm super grateful that I have a lot of genuinely nice and really funny and cool followers and the fact that I'm getting invited to Playlist Live this year is really freaking cool and I'm super excited to meet you guys in person. No, it's also valid of me to also be incredibly nervous with this new opportunity and just nervous in general with my platform getting a little bit bigger. Two things can be true at once, so I'm also extremely excited and looking forward to the future. Like I've already stated, this change is 
until I feel right to show my face on this platform again. But until I can show my face again, just know that I will change as a content creator. I will fail you as a content creator. I'll also evolve as a content creator, but I'll always do my absolute best to deliver you guys my truest, most genuine and authentic real self while going through these changes. I also hope that throughout all these changes, I can have your support and understanding. I myself don't even know how long this animated phase is going to last either. Who knows? What if I become a full-time Roblox player or decide to sell chalkboards or completely decide to quit YouTube and pursue a music career instead? I don't really know what the future has planned for me. I guess I just hope that whatever type of future it is, it's a good one. And guys, honestly, that's all I have to say for this video. I know that it was a long video and it might seem a little bit disorganized, but honestly, this video was just kind of a love letter to my audience that's been rocking with me since day one and of course my newer subscribers. But it's also a letter of everything that's been in my heart, in my mind, trying to escape during the two months that I was gone. And to be honest with you guys, I was just gonna come back and straight up never show my face again and just be like an animated YouTuber. But I know that that would not slide and I mean I myself would be kind of like um the hell if one of my favorite youtubers just all of a sudden decide to not show their face with no explanation and also why they've been gone for two months so yeah definitely this is just kind of what's been weighing on my heart lately thank you to those who actually stuck around to the very end to absolutely hear everything that I had to say all my complaining and projecting and all the ugliness and <laughs> that I've been dealing with but also all of the beauty. And of course, a huge thank you to It's Keisha and Penny Tovar to helping me make this video. I couldn't have done it without them and also their support that they give me in my personal life. And of course, I want to say thank you to everyone watching because I wouldn't have an audience to tell this story to. I know throughout the years, I've changed my content up so much from being an MUA to doing commentary to doing in-depth video essays from reactions. And honestly, thank you so much for everyone who's been incredibly supportive in me dabbling in all types of areas with my content and sticking with me and still liking it because <laughs> I know that it might be a little confusing to catch up with. Please go check out It's Keisha's and Penny Tovar's YouTube videos and follow them on Instagram. I know Keisha also makes music, so please go check her out on Spotify. Guys, I also make music on SoundCloud. Go ahead and check that out. And of course, I am on Instagram. And I know some of you might be very sad that I'm not going to be showing my face anymore on this platform, but don't you worry because after a very long time of me working on my Patreon, my Patreon is finally open. Yes it's finally here i only have one tier because um i'm trying to make it as affordable and accessible to absolutely everyone but basically on my patreon i'm going to be doing twitch streams talking about stuff that i wouldn't usually talk about on youtube you know on other youtubers such as onion boy and ec because you can get demonetized and actually like get a strike if you talk about those things on this platform and i'm not willing to do that so we can talk about that privately on twitch i'll also be doing gameplays behind the scenes content we can text and i do post stuff about my wedding there i actually already revealed my wedding dress over in my patreon so if you guys want go ahead i am going to be incredibly active on my patreon from now on with actually showing my face because i feel a little bit more comfortable doing it with a smaller group of people so if you want to join go ahead it's only five dollars a month and i hope to see you guys there i want to close off this video by giving a thank you to my patrons mia alia anna and eve who are all supporting me on my honorary homie tier and i hope to have many more homies after this video make sure to like and subscribe and comment underneath this video kind of your opinion on anything that i've talked about in this video but you know the drills guys make sure that it's nice and respectful and start a conversation out in the comments without being disrespectful to one another and last but not least i want you guys to have an amazing day take a break drink some water play some roblox make sure to sign up to see me live in person and playlist live in orlando links will be pinned down in the comment section whatever you do today make sure that you make it count all right, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.
着。